Hello, welcome back. My name is Hadi. Uh, I'm the member of JobSkillshare.com, and in my previous video, I introduced a course uh, in uh, introduction to IT supervising. Uh, and in this course, I'll be just elaborating more to what I talked about in my previous video. I found an article online which was pretty interesting. Um, it's called 10 Steps to Becoming an IT Manager. I posted a link at the end of this video. You can you can click on it or copy and paste it in your own uh, browser and read it later. Uh, I'm just going to be summarizing the article for you guys because I thought it was pretty interesting and accurate to what I went through personally. The first point the article makes is called team leader. Basically, the team under team leader, the article talks about that in order to, in order to become a team leader, you have to be comfortable. You have to take small steps. Don't jump the big guns. Always take the small steps. Like I mentioned in my previous video, I first started my IT career as a desktop support, which most of people do. Then I became a, after two years, I became a network admin. Then after two years, I became a system admin, which was nothing different, but different things I had to deal with. Um, then I became a field technician. Then I became a systems engineer, and then I became a IT manager. And you know, I took small steps. I learned through all my, you know, jobs I had, and I brought the skills with me to become a, a effective team leader. Next point the article makes is volunteer for responsibility. Uh, it's kind of the wording I didn't really like it, but. Um, basically, the article talks about if your boss or your manager asks you something that's out of your way, that's you know not in your daily schedule, but you can make some time for it, I say do it. Why? Because everybody at your job is looking at you, not just your boss, your colleagues and your other co-workers and people from different departments are looking at you. When you do something out of your way, when you do something extra for your boss super or your supervisor, you know, your boss will mention it to other people, to his co-workers, to his uh, superiors that, hey, uh, you know, Hadi did this for me, you know, he's a good guy, you know, blah, 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 and he did a good job. Uh, if you guys have anything that needs to be done, let me know, uh, you know, Hadi might be able to help you out. What I'm trying to say is, if you do something extra for your boss or your supervisor, you will be more likely to be recommended to do other things which are even more higher than your skills. And why not? Why don't you want to take something that's higher than your skills? Because it will look good on your resume. And you want to learn something new. You want to be involved in more projects than, you know, on your, whatever your project you're involved in. You want to be involved in bigger and better projects because it will look good on your resume. Um, the next point the article makes is called the make make the break. Uh, make the break basically uh, talks about you know don't drift from one road to another uh, but make a distinct fresh start and use break to reinforce the transition. Uh, Basically, you if you're moving from it one role to another, uh, take some courses, take take some training training lessons, take some online online classes to supplement your your role. Don't just start a new role without having any certain skills knowledge. Yes, skills is a little too much, but definitely knowledge. You know, if you have a knowledge of something, you will be most likely to use the knowledge to gain skills. So definitely take advantage of your work's resources. If they're providing you with the training, definitely take it. Don't just, you know, say, no, I think I can do it. No. You know, it's going to be beneficial to you. You have nothing to lose. Then, you know, why not? Hold a workshop. This is pretty interesting. Hold a workshop. Hold a workshop basically talks about 
you getting to know your coworkers, getting to know how motivated they are to get involved in the project that's about to start. How motivated are they to do the job? You know, a lot of coworkers, I'm not, I shouldn't say coworkers, a lot of people I've seen, they try to milk the system. They would, you know, you say, yeah, I'm excited about this project, but all in all, they're, they're, they're in there to just, Make the money and get the hell out of the get the hell out. Those type of people people I would say are the ones that overqualify sometimes. They're just got this job because they couldn't find anywhere else. They're just there. You know, they have a lot of certification on their belt. They probably has a master's degree the, under their belt, but they can't find a job, so they got this position and they're doing this just to make money. And you know, you just gotta be careful with those people. You just need to know who they are exactly. Speak to your rival. That's another interesting point. Um, before I became the team lead, my boss made one of my coworkers team lead. Uh, he was at first he was really good at it. Then I started to notice that he was complaining every day. He would complain about you know not having time to see his girlfriend. He would complain about people not doing the work properly. So long story short, uh, my boss noticed that and he. Moved him to a different position, which was similar to managing, but not managing the technicians, but managing paperwork. And he took my and he gave me the position. Well, I talked to him, uh, not my manager, but my so, the other guy that was team lead before me. I talked to him. I'm like, hey, look, um, you know what was bothering you? What what could you have done better? And when I talked to him, I gained some. Uh, knowledge and I gained some insight and you know I use that in my favor I did things that he was having trouble with you know being a single guy and I didn't, I didn't complain so, oh yeah I can't see my girlfriend yeah I was working long hours I was doing you know a lot of hours like 10 hours a day 12 hours a day I didn't complain yeah my only complaint was that I was missing gym session but then I uh, you know somehow managed to put that in my everyday schedule too um, all right. Learn to delegate. This was a little weird for me. Uh, actually, not weird for me, but uh, I didn't understand what they meant by delegate until I read the whole section. Basically, what they're saying is um, you don't want to be a manager or supervisor that's constantly, you know, telling people what to do. <clears throat> you should be comfortable in your own seat, and if you're called upon to help them out then do it otherwise don't interfere you know let's say if I was a Java developer and I knew some coding and in my team I have a Java developer who's doing something that I used to do and I see him do something differently you know I'm I don't I don't want to go up to him and say hey why are you doing this way why don't you do the way I did it it will help you out no 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 this this is gonna backfire if you tell people what to do. Let them do what they're doing their way on their own way. If they ask you for your help, then you should jump in and help them out. You know, because as a as a as a as a team lead, as a manager, you're gonna lay out the objectives for the day. You're gonna tell your colleagues, your 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 coworkers that hey, I'm gonna I want you to finish this by the end of the today. And if the Java developer that's under your team, he doesn't finish it by the end of the day. Then you can say, hey man, do you want to try my way? This is how I used to do it too and it worked out. And, uh, you know, you should do it. If not, then, um, you know, you need to sit down and talk. But, uh, you should let the people do the way to do things. Don't interfere unless you're, you, you, they call you for help. Find your style. There's a lot of style of people you're going to run into. Uh, you know, I, you know, this picture I saw and it's really it was interesting to me because uh, you know you can definitely tell the difference between the boss and the leader you wanna be in a position where you get to know your colleagues and co-workers and you lead them with you you don't wanna sit behind a desk and give them order you don't wanna be one of those bossy people who are always grumpy and expecting you know employees to finish the work on time no you wanna walk around with them you want to see what's going on. Sometimes you're going to have a coworker who's really shy and he's afraid to ask you a question. Maybe as a good leader, you're walking around, you see him struggling and you approach him like, hey, do you need help? 
and he should be able to you know reply to you with some sort of suggestion say hey uh, I, I don't know how to do this can you help me out and you can sit there and talk and you can sit there and help them out it's gonna show you it's gonna help you get to know yourself better it's gonna help you get to know your coworkers better uh, uh, let me go back to this point I don't know if you guys read this book it's called uh, Od uh, Odyssey and in the book Odyssey the leader Odysseus went through his, went through the journey and he's a perfect example of the leader uh, he took care of his shipmates he took care of everybody on the ship really good book I don't want to get into it you should read it there's a book there's a movie on it too it's based on um, Greek mythology really interesting all right back to our article uh, get your manager support definitely I'm not saying to kiss ass definitely get on your good side of your boss or your manager get to know them if they ask you for like in, in the previous point they say take volunteer for responsibility do it if your boss is happy with you you're gonna be happy with the end results you're gonna be happy with what he's gonna do for you in the future let's say you are applying for a new job and you put your boss as a reference you want to have a good reference you don't want to have a bad reference you want to have your boss tell the other people hey uh, he did extra work he's a good employee he did this for me I would highly recommend him you want to hear you, you you want your other recruiters to hear this from your boss check the layout of the land basically the article says you need to know what's given to you you need to know how much responsibility how much authority you have you don't want to just assume that you are allowed to do certain things what I'm saying is don't cross the line know your if you have a problem with the coworker if you don't like the way they do things talk to them if they don't listen to you then talk to your boss don't just Assume that you have the power to to talk to to lay the to lay down the law. No, that's not your job. Final step, the final point the article mentions: make it personal. Uh, go out on happy hours with your coworkers. Get to know them. Talk to them on an everyday basis. Make them feel like that you're their friend, not their boss or their manager. Make them feel like that you're a cool person. Don't be a stuck up. Don't be don't be stiff every day get to know them because personally I travel a lot for my work sometimes I will forget something that's really important to me and if I didn't have any if, if I had, you know didn't make friends with my co-workers I would be in big trouble what I'm trying to say is if I'm traveling somewhere and I forgot something back at my desk I will call my coworker. I'm like, hey man, I need help. Can you go to my desk and read me, you know, uh, this thing that's written? Or can you get on my desk and email me um, this thing to my account? So something like that. Something that's that shows that you know you're there for them and they're there for you. That kind of situation should be, you know, it, it's essential. You want to have support, not just of your boss or your manager, but of your coworkers too, because you make it personal it's always going to be beneficial to you when it comes to applying for your next job and your next job says give us a reference of you one of your co-workers you know you, you can give anybody then like okay uh, you know it's common sense here's the link as I, as I mentioned earlier um, it's basically I talked about the entire article uh, in my next video I'm going to talk about what training I took, what courses, what certification I took to where I am and I'm going to mention other small things and I'm going to try to get more technical later in this course. That's it for now. I'll see you guys later.